Hi, this is Kif's Crypto here with your weekly update. Let's jump right into the Ethereum merge. As you all know, the Ethereum merge is a usually anticipated event, highly anticipated, and it's expected to arise between September 10th to September 20th. So it's not too far away. The talk of the town is, however, that it will launch around September 14th. Coming to the statistics. Now, I recently found this chart provided by Kaiko that explains the Ethereum open interest in Ethereum. Now, what I mean by that is what I mean by open interest is open interest analyzes the amount of open positions that future traders hold. Based on analyzing this, I came to see that Ethereum is close to the highest for the year in open positions. Its USD is 7.17 billion. A lot of these positions are short positions. And bear in mind, the macro situation is horrible. So if this was a bullish scenario, you would expect Ethereum to, you know, spike up or pump because it's a bullish macro situation and the news of the merge is a highly anticipated news. That's the recipe for a bull run, specifically for Ethereum. However, even though this is a highly anticipated event, it's happened at a time where everything else is in the red, where, you know, there's the, the, the global market, the macro situation is horrible. So you can't expect it to spike up that much. You can't expect it to completely pump. You have to look at the bigger picture before you start to jump into, oh, this is highly anticipated. Let's slow down. However, something to also consider is that Ethereum, unlike Bitcoin, is a heavy ecosystem. So when Bitcoin forked in the past and Bitcoin Cash came about, it was easy to transition. With the merge, it's not so easy of a transition. It's it's extremely difficult. It's If you think of it, a way to picture this is, think of Ethereum as a car that's driving really fast. And while it's driving, the developers are changing its engine while it is driving. Bear in mind, Ethereum is a heavy ecosystem. It has so many dApps built on top of it. So it's very difficult for it to transition. So it's, it's, it's risky and dangerous. However, bear in mind, there are a lot of developers working on this and they have taken their due time to launch this. So I'm, I feel like the likely scenarios, there are two likely scenarios. There would be a short squeeze that would happen because of the amount of short positions that are there in the market. Or there would be a sliced price increase, a slight price increase, just based on the anticipation of the merge, but softened by the blow of the macro situation. The less likely bearish scenario is if the merge goes wrong, if the transition isn't as smooth. Now, that's something to watch out for. So these are the three likely scenarios. I mean, the two likely scenarios and one unlikely scenario. Now, I know I mentioned short squeeze as one of the scenarios. So a short squeeze is when a lot of future traders have open short positions, but the short positions don't get met, meaning the lower price does not get met, which they have bet on. And so it closes so the positions get close so many at such a fast rate so so rapidly that the price spikes and it spikes and usually crashes right after. So that's what a short squeeze is. As of time of recording, we can see Bitcoin is currently at eighteen thousand seven hundred and sixty two. As I pull up this chart, you can see a huge red candle to the downside. Old time highs of 2017 have come back to haunt Bitcoin as Bitcoin fails its relief rally this September. Now, September 
is a phenomenon based on technical analysis and the history where Bitcoin tends to be quite bearish in September, so it's become a thing where people say September. Macroeconomic turmoil is remains the name of the game and what I mean by that is the Europe energy crisis that has taken place. Um, also where the Euro is at a 20 year low versus the United States dollar. Stocks are also struggling in the face of a still strong greenback, leaving little room for a breakout to the upside for cryptocurrencies. A lot of traders are therefore so bearish, in fact, that they feel Bitcoin is going to test the lows that it has tested in June, where it was 17,600. I feel the Europe's energy crisis has played a major, is a major player in why Bitcoin is at the ugly red that you have seen. The Euro is trading at its lowest against the US dollar, having passed under 0 0.99. The Nord Stream 1 gas pipeline in Russia has been suspended on maintenance issues and this has caused a devastating effect to Europe. Europe's reacted through the advice of the G7 summit to cap the energy from Russia. This has definitely caused the gas markets to completely surge through the roof and plan B, the creator of stock to flow Bitcoin price models. He has said people should focus on food and gas and Bitcoin is secondary. It is not a buy the dip. And so that is some of the strongest reasons I feel Bitcoin is at its red. For a second, I'd like you to pause and think about how much of an impact a suspension of natural gas from Russia can have? Think about it. A lot of countries within the European Union, within Europe, depend solely on natural gas. So that's going to cause chaos. We're already seeing it in Germany, where they are, as backup, using two power plants to mine coal, to burn coal. So it's quite a scary situation. Analyze the dollar, let's look at the DXY, which has reached 20 year highs, going past 110. This has spooked me out because this is gonna have a clear effect on devastating effect on stocks and crypto. Oof. I'm spooked. Enough of this bearish sentiment. Let's actually move to something a little more optimistic. Let's actually zoom out and look at crypto from the long term perspective, because it's easy to get caught up in this macro situation. Very easy. But what's difficult? is to have diamond hands and hodl. Speaking of hodling, the hodlers are knuckling down to weather the Bitcoin price storm and setting local records in the process. The percentage of the Bitcoin supply now stationary in its wallet for a year or more has thus hit a new all time high of 65.78%. The amount of coins being hodled or otherwise cut off from circulation overall reached its highest level in almost two years. The DC Attorney General has sued Michael Saylor and his company MicroStrategy for tax evasion 
Michael Saylor, as a resident of DC, has not paid his taxes worth over 25 million. But with the added penalties, him and his company have to pay over a hundred million dollars. Imagine if we had that amount. <laughs> now, why have I brought this news topic up and why you should pay attention to MicroStrategy or Michael Saylor? It's quite synonymous because Michael Saylor is the co-founder of MicroStrategy. He is a billionaire tech executive and he owns the most amount of Bitcoin as a public traded company in this world worth over three billion dollars of Bitcoin as of time of writing. It is amazing. So as you can see, he's a major player. And these are things you have to really focus on to see how the market moves. Another major news that has popped off in the market is Meta. Now, Meta has integrated NFTs into Facebook and Instagram, where if you have an NFT collection, you own it, you want to flaunt it, you want to share it, you can integrate your wallet to your Instagram and showcase your NFT collection on Instagram or Facebook. And that's an amazing feature for the longevity of NFTs and thereby cryptocurrencies. So here are my closing thoughts. If you like what you see, subscribe.